Fox News political and legal analyst Ebony Williams. And today's hashtag one lucky guy, we welcome back from the great state of Utah, the chair of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Jason Chaffetz. And sir, you are outnumbered. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Thank it. You. Glad to be here. Yes, I love having mountain state people around <laughs> as an Arizona girl. All right, let's yeah, get started. All right. The big announcements coming out of Trump Tower. First, high sources in the transition telling Fox News that former Labor Secretary Elaine Chao is President elect Trump's pick for Transportation Secretary. She's the wife of Senate Majority Leader. Mitch McConnell. Mr. Trump also tapping Obamacare critic and Georgia Congressman Tom Price to head the Health and Human Services Department. And Mr. Trump is meeting with Mitt Romney for a second time over dinner tonight as he weighs who will be his Secretary of State. But others are still reportedly in the mix for that post, including Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Bob Corker, who Trump is also meeting with today. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and former CIA Chief General Petraeus. General Petraeus had this to say about his meeting with the the president elect yesterday. He basically walked us around the world, uh, showed a great grasp of a variety of the challenges that are out there and some of the opportunities as well. So, very good conversation, and we'll see where it goes from here. So, Congressman Chaffetz, tonight Mitt Romney is going on his second one on one date with Donald Trump. It's going to be the most dramatic rose ceremony ever say, right? to find out who's going to be Secretary of State. Uh, and it's, like, it's like The Bachelor. And, you know, you have Rudy Giuliani and people in the back saying, I'd be a better match for him. Who do you think it will ultimately, he will ultimately I, I, Any one of those four choices is pretty good, but the idea of Donald Trump getting together with Mitt Romney, maybe there can be peace in the Middle East if those two can get together. So, yeah. um, um, I don't know. He's, they're all four good choices. You don't have a favorite? I, I mean, I'm partial to Mitt Romney. I just think I, he, he resides in my state of Utah. I'm a huge fan. I spent 100 days on the road when he campaigned for president. But all four of them, Rudy Giuliani, David Petraeus is an exceptional understanding of, of the world. And certainly the senator has, is more than qualified as well. Uh, Dagan, do you think, do you agree that it's kind of like the bachelor and the rose ceremony? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, he owned the Miss Universe pageant, pageant <laughs> so I felt like it was kind of like a pageant initially with all the people walking in and out of the Trump Tower. But there is the drama, which I soak up each and every day. But it does speak to, and you can disagree with me, Congressman, to our extraordinary, rigorous process that he is going through in terms of interviewing people. And I like the fact that he's talking to people who don't necessarily agree with him. Mitt Romney, for example, yeah. called Russia the great, our greatest geopolitical threat. Uh, Trump yeah. sounds a different tone. Uh, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn sounding a different tone on Russia. David Petraeus, his entire strategy in terms of kind of in, uh, troop intensive strategy in, in Iraq and Afghanistan doesn't kind of dovetail with what Donald Trump said on the campaign trail. His idea of we need to maybe stay in the Middle East even after we're out of Iraq doesn't dovetail with Donald Trump. Is that reassuring? Well, look, I, it, the, the president-elect is secure in his own skin. The idea that he's looking at people that uh, disagreed with him and disagreed with him even as a person, I think, speaks to the strength of, of Donald Trump and what he's looking at because he's not afraid to surround himself with diversified thought and diversified people. And as he rounds out this cabinet, I think it's getting to be a very impressive group, better better than I think most people thought. And, and it's really impressive how much personal time he's taken. I've talked to a couple of people who've actually been in some of these meetings with him and, and they're just so impressed on the wide variety of questions and the personal interest that he yeah. takes in this. So it's much really has important. Been has been made though of this you know conflict within uh, the transition team and Megan you and I were talking about this before the show I might even ask you I mean do you buy into this idea that there's this huge riff and Kellyanne Conway has gone rogue we saw Jason Miller say on Fox News Channel earlier today that she had Donald Trump's blessing when she went out she asked permission to go out and speak her mind on the Sunday shows I wasn't the least bit surprised to hear that he knew she was going to say that I mean what do you make all of all that I understand what it feels like to be like from day one I was loyal to this candidate. I believed in them from day one. And I think that's where Kellyanne Conway at Newt Gingrich and Rudy Giuliani are feeling right now, that somehow their loyalty should be repaid with maybe cabinet positions. And obviously, Kellyanne Conway, we talked about yesterday, I was not thrilled with that kind of rhetoric. I just find it a little ridiculous, and I think we should be trying to make amends and reaching out as President-elect Donald Trump is. But it'll be interesting to see if this internal strife about the loyalists and the sort of the old-school Republicans can somehow make amends in the White House.
course. Well, look, I respect and appreciate loyalty as much as anyone, right? But we all know that the stakes could not be any higher than they are. And around the selection of these critically important, especially Secretary of State, my goodness, um, it couldn't be more important to pick the best person, more so than yeah. the most loyal person, right? So for someone like me, you know, I look at a Mitt Romney pick, and that's encouraging, possibly, because, number one, it shows us first that Donald Trump might not be as petty as some of us suspect. Right. Uh, that you can look past this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was really egregious rhetoric on the campaign trail. But if you can say, you know what, forget what you said about me, because this actually isn't about me. You know, this is a very important point here, right? This is about the, the good will and what's in the best interest of the American people. And if he decides after this kind of callback interview with Mitt Romney tonight or whatever that he's best positioned, I trust President-elect will make that decision regardless of, uh, regardless of, of what happened between the two of them. Congressman David Petraeus, as Secretary of State, misdemeanor, pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor for mishandling classified information. As much as Donald Trump hammered Hillary Clinton about how she ran her state department and what was going on with the Clinton Foundation. Do you think that gets gets him in, portrays into trouble if he's the nominee and has to go through confirmation? Well, let's keep in mind that uh, David Petraeus had to pay, I think, a $100,000 fine. He was, he was a, on a misdemeanor. Um, he paid the price to do so. Uh, I think that's a difference than somebody such as Hillary Clinton, who had nothing lobbied against her in terms of, of uh, a penalty. Um, that investigation, by the way, there's still a lot of things that we still need to learn about that. But um, David Petraeus, I think, is a great American, and he has proven himself over you know decades of time. He made a mistake. It was wrong. It was absolutely wrong. Uh, he admits that it was wrong, uh, and he's paid a penalty. But you know, at some point, you got to move on. I think one of the interesting things that people forget that that Mitt Romney and Donald Trump have in common when they talk about